Welcome to What Does That Do? Where we take a look at obfuscated code and break it down to figure out exactly what it is doing. Let's get started. So, if we take a look at this, uh, it's Perl script. We're using the Digest MD5 and Digest SHA modules to get the um, to get the checksum functions that we need. We're using MIME Base64 to do the actual decoding, and we're using Compress Zlib for the uh, for the decompression. Um, the first thing we're doing is checking to make sure that there's a halt compiler statement within the first 600 characters or so, um, because that's generally where the halt compiler uh, statement is in the files that we're decoding. Um, if we don't find halt compiler, we just exit out, and then we we split the um, the contents on uh, eval base sixty four decode because we know that if there's less than three of those statements, then there's a good chance that we're either not using the right format, uh, the file's not in the right format, or it's a broken format. So one or more of the statements are missing. Um, but we'll still try it. So we'll still try to brute force the MD5 and brute force the shot one hash. Um, if we do find three, uh, three eval base 64, uh, statements or more, then we'll, then we start actually doing the rest of our processing. And that, basically looks like finding the index of the first one, finding where the first semicolon is after that, uh, getting that substring, and then stripping out the base64 text. So that way we can then go in and uh, decode that to see what it what it looks like. Um, the PHP encoders that do integrity checks on the first part of the file, um, namely the, the code that does the decoding, those all have pregreg replace, a pregreg replace statement in that first eval. And if we do find that, then we know that the next eval after that is going to contain an array of four, um, uh, four integers. So we go through the same process. We find the next eval after the first semicolon. We find the next uh, semicolon after that eval statement. We get take that substring and we strip off the uh, base64 code. We decode it and we look for the array. Um, the fourth the fourth value here is the length of the base64 payload and then the sum of the first three is uh, the beginning of that uh, that payload and the reason that we're looking for 32 or 40 here is because an md5 hash is 32 characters and a sha1 hash is 40 characters uh, if we're not dealing with that so if we're dealing with the situation where it's looking at the checksum of the payload itself, then it has an if not function exists statement in there where it's looking for the randomly named function that's that it does that does everything. And then the array only has three integers in it. And it's again the same thing. There's two integers here and then 32 or 40, depending on which uh, checksum it's using. And so there we're just looking for the that substring, uh, that index into the hash or into the file, because everything after the checksum is going to be the entire payload. Um, this is just a little warning in case we start seeing uh, file formats where it's a really short substring in there. And then we go in and we uncompress the contents. Uh, 
And to do that, we're just taking the substring of the original contents with the index and then the length. That brings us our new content. And then we initialize our uh, decompression uh, library um, and inflate the new content and print it out if we get an OK or we reach the end of the stream. Um, if it's not OK, then we exit out of the while loop. And if we didn't reach the end of the um, the end of the compressed content, then we have a, a little bit of an error possibility, and we go into the brute force mechanisms. So um, to do the brute force, um, it's pretty simple. We find the where the halt compiler statement is. We strip out everything before the halt compiler statement as well as that statement. And then, uh, because we're brute forcing a SHA-1 checksum here, we're looking for 40 characters. And we're going to keep incrementing the offset until we find 40 consecutive characters that are uh, X digit, which are uh, hex. X digit is the POSIX class for um, hexadecimal characters, so 0 through 9, A through F. Um, and then once we find that, uh, once we find that substring, we're going to pretend that it's the checksum, and then, we, then we're going to start testing it against the payload. And the payload is really just splitting that on the checksum and then taking the stuff that comes after it and trying and uh, running the checksum on it. And if they match, then we base64 decode it and cycle through the, uh, the same decompression algorithm that we were doing before. And again, if we run into an error with the, with the decompression or we reach the stream end, we exit out of this while loop. Otherwise, we just keep incrementing the offset and, uh, and keep moving on to the further down the string. The base64 uh, function is basically the same, except we're looking for 32 characters instead, and then everything else is the same for that. If we run this, uh, let's, if we run this, for example, on, we'll just take this one as an example. Here it runs through, it finds the, the function exists is the thing that's in that first eval statement. And so it's doing the checksum against the payload itself. And so we see that it's, it has a function here, it's including curl, and then it has country details with country initials and what the country actually is. And then it has a post that does picks a, a random user agent, so on and so forth, and attempts to connect to PayPal, it looks like. So this looks like it's probably uh, some sort of phishing related file. This is what the file looks like normally. It has the PH and PHP encode by Zura. Here's the decompression logic. So the first eval B64 is here. And then it grabs this, this bit of base 64 encoded stuff, decompresses it, and that's where the file exists content is found, uh, along with the array. And then if we look further down here, we can see that here is a string and it's 40 characters long. And so with this is the checksum that it, it's looking for and comparing against the rest of the file that starts here. But by the same token, there are some uh, legitimate variations of this or more importantly, there are potentially legitimate ones because the only uh, identifying mark of these files happens to be that 
it says sendico at the top, um, but anybody can fake that, so it's not really that indicative. But here we have that first eval, and if we run the decoder against this, we see that it finds the pregreg replace in the first eval, and so then it knows that it needs the second, uh, the second eval in order to find the, uh, the array. And then it, it's able to decode it again. And if we look at in the code itself, the checksum is within that string. And so there's a little bit of work that it has to do to find the right checksum within there. If it were brute forcing it, if it's just using the, uh, the substrings, then it knows exactly where it, where it stops and starts in order to get the right, uh, the right index in there. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live. And leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.